Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. 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 Introduction. Um, you know, I just want to give honor to the pastor. He's been a great man of God for us. And um, and everybody here, everybody here has given me a, a lesson to learn from. And everybody here is, uh, has taught me something new. And uh, let's, just, uh, let's just give God some praise right now. God is good, isn't he? Yes, So, I'm going to start off. Uh, the name of this um, of this sermon, I guess you could say, is uh, God Will Do It Again. In 1 Samuel 17, 32, or 1st, in 1 Samuel, yes, 32, David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with them, for thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. And David said to Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him, and smote him, and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he rose up against me, I caught him by his beard, smote him, and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defiled the armies of the living God. David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out the paw of a lion, and out the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Go, and let the Lord be with thee. Like uh, Pastor said, a year ago, my life was very different. Um, and I, uh, I had an opportunity to give my testimony. And um, like I said before, it was watered down and it wasn't my full testimony. And people were telling me congratulations, but it was uh, something that I did not deserve at all. And I started to feel heavy conviction. And this was in July. The whole month of July was, uh, was very tough. I would smoke a lot, I'd just smoke, sleep. I didn't wanna, you know, I didn't wanna think about anything. and. Uh, and we went on a cruise and the whole time we were in this beautiful area, I was under this heavy conviction in my heart and, and I couldn't enjoy it. And, um, and then the day came, it was August 1st, I gave my life to God. And the second day, was the, August 2nd was the day that, you know, I started, you know, I was sober and I've been sober since. But, but you see, that's, that's, you guys are just seeing some of the harvest because there was seeds planted years prior even before all of us were born. My grandma, her, her father, um, he was, he, uh, he was, he lived a crazy life, but there was a day that three missionaries came and they preached to him, just them three and him, just them four by themselves and, and he gave his life to God. And my Nana and Adina, my Nana Liz, her mother, she, uh, from what I heard, that she, she wasn't really an apostolic. She was Catholic, of a Catholic background or something like that. But a sister from the church invited her. And years later, my nana is still serving, still serving God. My dad fasted so many days for me. When I, when I got sober, my mom told me that he was on a fast of seven days. My mom, she would always come to the altar. And I would, I would see her praying for me and praying. I, I didn't see her, I wouldn't know she was praying for me, but I, in my heart, I knew she was praying for me. I just saw her praying. Yes. But these are, they planted seeds. And, and it took many years for these things to come to pass. But we are seeing some of the fruit yes. which uh, from the seeds that were planted. Hallelujah. Um, you know, a lot of us know the testimony. When I was seven, things happened. And, uh, and at first I said it was molestation, but I feel like I allowed it to happen. I almost carried out those acts with others, but God didn't allow that to happen. Now, I wanna get you guys in the, uh, in the picture of my life when I was around 15, 16, we had just moved out here to this valley and uh, I didn't wanna move out here. I didn't wanna live out here. I had my friends, I had a girlfriend out there. I hated it. And I was trying to be a boxer, you know, so I was, you know, deep heavy into this. And uh, I just wanna get you guys into a picture of how life was for me and my family at yeah. that time. You see, there was uh, my friends, you know, they were supportive, you know, whatever, but but they knew that that wasn't me. I couldn't, that wasn't, that just wasn't me. 
and they would tell me, you know, messing around, you know, bro, you're not gonna do that. But it wasn't until my closest friend, Gabriel, he told me, he said, he told me in a serious manner, like, man, this isn't you, I don't think that you're gonna be able to do this. And, and it hit me like, wow. But at the time I felt, you know what, everybody turned their back on me. My family didn't really, it seemed like my family would just, we would just argue all the time. And it was just, it was just bad. Um, you know, there was a time where uh, I was just crying and crying. My dad was right there and he was like, you know, God loves you. But I said, if God loved me, why would he allow me to go through the things I went through? And why would he allow me to feel this way? If, if this isn't a God that loves me, my parents had filed for bankruptcy. Uh, my mom's car got repoed. My mom almost bled out. You know, all these things were happening at the same time. I was yeah. still from stores and I was still closed and I would sell them just to get money for weed. Wow. At this school, you know, you get credits. I would get credits. My parents would give me like five, ten dollars. I was getting credits like that just to get money for weed. Uh, and, and it wasn't until the day, March 8th, that, uh, that, you know, it was a church service. I didn't want to go. My mom, we had an argument. I ended up hitting the hole in the wall. Nobody knew we went to church. And uh, I never really went to church. I never really went inside. I would just smoke during services or or uh, just stay outside listen to music. But on this day, I stayed in the car and I wanted to listen to music, but my phone died and I was very upset about that. But um, I started praying and, and it was different. I, I prayed before, but at that time it was different. And I was in tears and I was weeping. And I'm sure my mom and my dad were praying for me on the inside on that altar call because that day I felt different. I felt I felt I felt something different that I never felt before. So we go home and uh, and I have to deal with the consequences. My me and my parents get in an argument, and I'm like, you know what? Then I just move. I have everything and I pack it all to the front and I got everything in the living room. And uh, and then I'm I'm already like you know I didn't know where I was gonna go, what I was gonna do, but I was just like I'm not gonna do this. I'm not gonna live here. Well then my parents. My mom, she told me, she said, Mijo, God has a plan for you. She said that, that God loves me and that, that I'm gonna help people across the world. And see, nobody knew the things that I did, my past. So in my heart, I'm hearing these things in my head. My, I'm, uh, the days before, I'm telling myself I'm nothing. I had no purpose. I felt I was worthless. I felt like there was no point to life on this earth. But God, told me and showed me on that day that there was something planned. And I can't say my life changed that day, but I can't say my life shifted in a different direction. And I moved forward with purpose. And, but I still lived wrong for years and years. And you know, and it wasn't until about like a year or two ago, I can't really uh, remember at the moment, but I was driving home and, and well actually we were gonna go to a movie and I didn't end up going and I was at my house and I was feeling conviction about these things that, I, that had happened so I would, um, so I, everybody went to the movie for me, and I was in the house, and, and I was just praying, God, don't, don't let my family suffer for the things I've done. Don't, like, just put it on me. I'll, I'll take the pain, I'll suffer for it, but don't let my family suffer. Because I heard about the kings before, how their, their children would suffer for the things they did and whatnot. So, so I prayed that prayer. A little while later, I would hear the, uh, I would listen to the radio and it was from the man Jimmy Swagger. He, he opened my, my mind to hear and understand the gospel. The gospel that Jesus died for our sins. There's just nothing that we can do, but he did it all. He was the lamb slain for us. Yes. And when I understood that, that really shifted my life in the right direction as well. But I still lived wrong. And then I changed my, my life changed. I gave my life to God months later. But you see, in this situation in my life, the devil had thought that our story was over. You see, he thought he had it all under his belt, but he had just won a battle because the victory was won on what Jesus did at Calvary. You see, though the serpent bit the heel of Jesus, his head was crushed by what was done on the cross. I'm telling you today that I have victory in what Jesus did for me, and we all have that same victory. Yes, and and right. it wasn't until I realized that, that that things started to shift. Now, in our lives, a lot of times we go through valleys, we go through situations, and, and we make it to a, a, a place where we're overcoming that. We had pain, but now we feel joy. You know, we go through situations, we had no money, but now we have money. We were bound, but now we're free. And we forget about the days when we were bound. Right. We forget about the days that we were hurting because now we're in prosperity. Oh, now yeah. we're in joy. All right. All right. And we forget about that, but we always got to remember that is, is there's always gonna be another mountain to climb. Oh, yes, man. 
There's always gonna be another goal to reach, another dream to achieve, achieve. But just as there's another dream to achieve, a goal to reach, and a mountain to climb, there's always gonna be another valley to go through. Hallelujah. But you need to remember that the same God who brought you from the valley before, the same God who brought you, that took you from the miry clay, that put your feet upon the rock, that took you out of a horrible pit, right. that took you out of uh, depression, out of addiction, out of sickness. The same God that did those things before would do it again because my God can do it again. And I don't know about you, I don't know what kind of God you serve, but my God, if he did it once, he could do it again. Do it again. If he did it for me, he can do it for you. You know, it's, that's, that's just the type of God we serve. And, uh -huh. and, you know, a lot of times in life we get hurt. And, you know, we just, we don't know what to do. But, you see, we just try to throw a Band-Aid. Yeah, that's true. We just try to throw a Band-Aid over that cut. You see, we're hurt. And we just throw a Band-Aid over that. You see, and everybody has different Band-Aids. Some people drink. Some people smoke. Some people shop. Uh -huh. Some people work. Some people party, they do all these different things. You could fill in the blank. Everybody has something that they do. It could be, you could travel, you could uh, you could have a hobby, you could paint, gar uh, do gardening, make music, whatever the case may be. You have a band-aid that you put your, over your cut, but that band-aid will not heal you. You're just covering up the pain. And what you need is Jesus. You need a move of God. And I'm telling you today that unless you take off that band-aid and put some near scoring, unless you take off that band-aid and put on some peroxide, your life ain't gonna change. Because you need some peroxide. You need some Jesus in your life. And I'm here to tell you today that it's gonna hurt. When you put peroxide, when you put alcohol on a cut, it burns. But that truth hurts. The fact of the matter is that maybe it is your fault you're in that situation you're in. The fact of the matter is that maybe you stayed in that relationship but it's not your fault. Oh wait, no, it is your fault because you stayed there and you did situations that, okay, you know what? This is my fault. It's infected. The reason it burns is because it's infected. There's some envy there. There's some pain there. There's some bitterness in that cut. And you need some peroxide, you need Jesus. But I'm here to tell you today that I have a first aid kit. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ. I know someone, of by his stripes we are healed. And I can tell you today that I was hurt. I had scars. I was deeply wounded. But Jesus came in and he healed me. And if he did it for me, he can do it for you. If he did it once, he can do it again. God is good. Oh yes, yes. Amen. amen. You know, even the Romans 5 8 says, even while we were sinners, God showed his love for us when he died for us. First mm -hmm. John 3 16 says, we perceive the love of God that he laid down his life for us. And a lot of times we don't accept that. We feel we're not worthy. We feel we don't deserve it. And you might be saying, you don't know what I've done. You don't know my life. You don't know what happened to me. You don't know how I feel. You know, I can't pay the bills. I can't find a job. The doctor says there's nothing that he can do. And I don't know much to say to that besides the fact that my parents were in bankruptcy, but they have better jobs now. They moved up. God has blessed them. Besides the fact that I was bound, but now I'm free. The fact that Sister Linda here at one point had cancer, but then God healed her. See, I don't know what to say to you besides the fact that God did it once, and I believe he can do it again. And that if God did it for us, he can do it for you. Whatever situation you're in, know that God has moved before, and he will do it again. People, they have different situations. Some people, they have financial situations. My parents are a testimony that God will bless you and he will turn you around. Some people have a situation where they need to be healed. And Sister Linda is a testament that God will heal you. And there's other testimonies out there, but I'm talking about testimonies that I've experienced, testimonies that I know about. Hallelujah. But there's also testimonies of redemption. My grandma on Tuesday, she told me about her, her dad and she was telling me about how I'm like him. And, and I was intrigued when she was telling me this. Hallelujah. But she told me the story how, how the day that the three, uh, the three missionaries came, my mom told me about how he, he once killed a man 
my grandma told me that he, he would drink all the time and he wasn't the best of guys. But one day, I'm sure that those three missionaries were telling them that Jesus loved them, that he died on the cross for them. I'm, I have no doubt in my mind that they gave him the gospel. Yeah. And God saved and changed them. He redeemed them. Yes. We know the story of Paul, how he persecuted the church, yet God saved, changed, and redeemed them. Yeah. We know the story of Peter, how, like, you, like us people right here in the church, Peter was deep into it. He wasn't just another sinner on the street. No, he was into it. Yet he fell when he heard that rooster crow. See, he almost let that rooster determine his future because, see, Judas and Peter were in a similar situation. They both fell on different levels, but they were in a similar boat. Yet Judas let that situation kill him. Peter let it build him. And we have the choice today to let our choices and our past build us or kill us. And like Peter, we need to let that choice build us because if we don't, there's, there's 3,000 people who are not going to hear repent and be baptized in Jesus' name. There's people that are not going to be hearing the gospel. There's a man that's lame that won't be able to be able to walk because you can't let the situations in your past determine your future. We know the story of David, how he fell short. He murdered and he committed adultery. And this was at the peak of his life. He just had just uh, won a victory when this happened. And the story of Jimmy Swagger, this man, is uh, his, his radio station really opened my mind to the gospel. I don't agree with everything, but the gospel, he opened my mind and my heart. I didn't know about the gospel. I didn't know Jesus died for me till I learned, heard, heard on the radio station and learned about it. But at one point in his life, he had a prostitute scandal, even in this valley. And he could have let that kill him. But instead, he let it build him, and God redeemed him. The same way God redeemed David, the same way God redeemed uh, Moses and everybody else in the Bible. Moses was a murderer. And he ran. He ran to the land of Gideon. Yet God told him, tell Pharaoh to let my people go. My God is a redeemer. My God's a healer. My God's a, he, he provides for us. He's a blesser. But my God also protects us. Yes. Hallelujah. You see, Jeremiah, the Bible doesn't say he wanted a family, but God told him that he wasn't to have a family. Leaves me with the impression maybe he didn't want a family. But if Jeremiah had had the family, he would have been in hurt from all this destruction that would happen. And God protected him from what he wanted because he knew that it would bring more pain for him to have what he wanted than to be without it. I can tell you guys about two testimonies that happened in this last year. My friend Nick, a uh, co-worker, or more, well, my ex-co-worker, but uh, he, uh, one day he was counting up the drawers. I was going to leave home, but I felt prompted to pray for him. So I said, hey, man, can I pray for you? I just did a little quick prayer. I don't know how long later, but he got into a car accident. He was with his little boy and his daughter and his uh, girl. And uh, and it, it, was, it wasn't nothing crazy, crazy, but... It was on the side that his son and his daughter and his wife was, or his girlfriend, and uh, and nothing happened. And I believe that God answered that prayer and protected him. Now, yeah. see, this is an even crazier one because I have a close friend named Cody, and he went to Minnesota, uh, solar solar jobs or whatever. And on his way back, see, I, on his on his way back, I don't know when or how, but I was driving home one day. And I was going through a situation, you know, weeping day and night, bad situation in my life, a trial that I had faced. And, and God told me, he said, pray for Cody. And, you know, there's times where we hear, we think we, God's hearing, talk, speaking to us. But this, I know God told me to pray for him. And I prayed for him. A day or two later, he got into a terrible accident. An accident where the paramedics came and they said, I don't know how you got out of this. We've seen accidents that were worse, that were better than this. And people died. They didn't have, a, there was three of them, not one of them had a scratch. My friend Cody literally had a little, looked like an Indian burn, like a little, didn't even penetrate his skin. But my God protected him. Yes. The same way God redeemed all those folk, the same way God uh, healed Sister Linda and blessed my parents, yes. the same way he protected all of us, he will do it again. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, if there's one thing that you can take from what I'm telling everybody here, it is the fact that God will do it again. Yes. Yes, he will. See, he made that which was crooked straight. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. He made the blind to see. 
the dumb to talk, the deaf to hear, and the lame to walk. See, my God did all these things before. We know that we've heard the stories. The lame man walked. The, the man who couldn't speak, he spoke. The, the, guy, the blind man, he got healed. All these people. See, God's worked before. And then we got situations where we got family members that are not in the church. They're living wrong. But we are testimony. I'm a testimony. Yes. My, my great grandfather is a testimony. You know, Paul is a testimony. And I also want to speak on the man named John Newton. You see, this man, he was a slave trader involved in the slave trade. He, um, he was on opium, he would smoke opium and, uh, and, um, and tobacco. But there was a day he was out in that sea and it was a bad, it was a bad storm. And, and he didn't know nothing else to do but pray. And he said, God, if you deliver me from this, then I will live for you. Years later, he made the hymn that we know, Amazing Grace. If God can use a man that did those things, he can use you. Yes. And whatever the situation is, know that God has done it before and he will do it again. Yes. And this is something that David understood. This is something David knew. You see, he, David had been in a situation where a bear came up against him. And he came up, and then there was a lion that came up against him. But God delivered him out of that. And there's times when we go through sickness, we go through uh, pain, we go through all these situations in life, and God delivers us. Hallelujah. We need to be as David and realize, you know what, God did it before, and I believe he can do it again. Yes. So whatever you face, just know, there's somebody that's been in that place. There's somebody that's overcame that situation. Hallelujah. But there's only one person that was a common denominator in all those situations. And that's God. No matter what you go through, know that God will do it again. Now, if there's a situation in your life and you don't know 